Oh, is this a hunting deal or? Yeah, it must be. Like I say, I've just seen some of these for the first time too. Life was unthinkably difficult back then, but it was honest and simple. Time seemed to have a different meaning. You know, it's been so long ago. <clears throat> it's a big deal seeing deer, you know. Grandpa was a worker. He was a visionary who lived life on his terms, who insisted he'd rather go to Ontario on the chance of finding fresh moose scat than go to a big city. Well, that's innovative, the way you flip, flop that up on that trailer. Yeah. You think anybody in the old days could think of something like that? <laughs> yeah. They doubt it. That's the garage where the guy stole the deer out of. Well, uh, Guy was from Minnesota. Lying. Naturally. Lying. <laughs> Where else would it come from? <laughs> oh, boy, look at that old sway back. Jeez. I think the stud got all of that. As a conservationist and farmer, he strived to leave the land better than he found it. But his greatest legacy, as a God-fearing man, he perhaps more than anyone I've known, left this world better than he found it. What a privilege for my old man and our buddy Gus and I to share the life and lore of William Moles. Sorry, potatoes! Tater harvest. Love it. How many fingers and hands and arms and feet got ripped off in the process of those potatoes? Any? Yeah, it's amazing. Yep. Only one woman got run over. Just this her is, leg. Is this something that <laughs> just, just her your leg. dad kind of manufactured <laughs> or built or? Yeah. Oh no, this is modern equipment. Yeah. <laughs> This is pretty much the way I remember it. <laughs> it's literally. That's probably the, ex that's the bottom spud house, only you guys covered it. Did you build a building around it? That's it? That's, a, that's the same thing that we were throwing potatoes off of. Yeah. I mean, pretty much, right? Like that's your, the lower spud house? Yeah. yeah. Turtle brown taters, weren't they? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Is that Grandpa's barn or our barn? That looks that like our grandpa's. Barn. You smoking there, boy? No, I ain't smoking. Who's that old gal? I don't know. Miller, that may be the uh, Esther Koenig there. It's one of our fantastic potato trucks. I remember that thing. That's the, the same old, one we had. Yeah, gear, gear drive. Oh, that looks like a Koenig right there. Yeah, that's Dory or Diane Koenig. So they're, they're grading the potatoes there, or what yeah. are they doing? They're just picking out the rocks and dirt there in the weeds. Oh. Yeah, see, I even remember doing this as a kid, kicking down the potatoes. But that looked just like uh, Andy and uh, Monica's girls there. It was Jerry Canning. Kurt had a friend, they found a Turtle Brand potatoes bag at a garage sale, just like that. And uh, she bought it for 40 bucks, and then Kurt bought it <laughs> from him, and he's got it framed at she Mom and Dad's house. She paid 40 bucks for that I think damn so. empty bag? Yeah, burlap sack. <laughs> well, man, you that can't Eddie? find them anymore. Yeah. Is that Eddie Ross? Yeah, that was Eddie. He was always smiling. Oh, yeah. 
Dang, that thing didn't do a very good job of kicking out the roots, did it? That one didn't. That was a first harvester. Didn't have, didn't clean the vines out. I had to pick them out behind hand. Holy well, I suppose at least you didn't have to dig them, I guess. You guys were probably happier than pigs and slop not having to I dig them I never got involved in any of that, i <laughs> tell you. The, the women that worked on it, I don't know, shit, they, they, it's unbelievable. Cold weather, be raining sometimes, wind blowing. It's a lot more fun to watch than it is to do. Now, wouldn't that work good to just take dumps of sand and sand would go through that machine and the rocks would go out into a trailer and you'd have nice filtered rock and filtered sand. Well, that's kind of what they do with the gravel. And after that, it went through a washer or what? Yeah, yeah. What, what's the cheapest? Like, I remember selling number twos, 100 pound of potatoes for $5.50. Well, we used I to remember. sell them cheaper than that. Well, I'm sure you yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. A couple of years, number ones, 100 pounds would be $3. Number twos were $2, 100. Millie Cabusta there. Who's the old boy in front? He acts That's like he knows what's going mechanic. on. Jerry Koenig's dad and Dale Koenig's dad. There we're just running them in the warehouse unwashed oh. for winter storage. Why wouldn't you wash them first? I suppose well, then they, they were wet, then they probably didn't yeah, store as good. Yeah, if, if we washed them, we have to let them dry off before we mm. can dump them in the basement. Grandpa's old house. There's Eddie. Eddie smiling away. Yeah. He's just happy as a clam. He didn't have a pot to piss in, but he was always happy, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Is that where you market Marnie? most of your potatoes? Uh, well, a lot of them locally. Well, know. I know. I mean, yeah. I remember my folks. But we shipped them to Chicago and. Oh, you did? Yep. Okay. Cincinnati. I loaded boxcars. I, oh, okay. I think we were the last ones to use the. Railroad station in Elmina, we shipped them out by boxcar. Okay. Put 500, 100 pound sacks in a boxcar. Then towards the end, we could haul more. We could put 600 in, I think it was. Even hauled them into town with a pickup. We used to put 50 bags in the pickup and haul them into town. Then we had a truck, we put 100 bags in and uh -huh. load them in the truck and then carry them in the boxcar and pile them in the boxcar. Is that Vernie up there? No, that's Jerry, or no. Larry Koenig, or Jerry, I think. So basically, number ones were the oval watermelon. Right there was a number one. The number twos were knobbies. Yeah. Right. Remember the one of probably white oak planks? I remember those on the conveyors you'd have. Did you sell them in the local grocery store like in Turtle Lake oh, yeah, too? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Ray's store, he used to buy, he'd come at night. Who? And Ray and Clayton, Ray's general oh. store. Oh! Yeah. And uh, we used to take them up to the hospital in uh, Luck. We usually took them at night, Dad and I. We'd load the pickup up and they'd buy a, a pickup load all the time in the hospital. We <coughs> used to have to carry them down the basement, down the steps, and down the hall in the basement, and then pile them in and carry them by hand down in there. We'd do that at night after we were done. Couldn't use there. a two-wheel cart or nothing? No. Uh, I suppose we could have. We didn't have enough brains. <laughs> did it by hand. <laughs> well, I know we always laid in five or six. Oh, yeah, well, all the farmers. Yeah, every And a couple, couple of milk haulers would buy, and they'd, they'd drop off. Potatoes on their routes, you know, for people to have half the milk truck full of canned milk. And they'd take the 100 pound sacks off and, you know, drop them in the milk house and people would pay them. And, you know, then we had Twin Cities too, they'd buy from us a lot. Of well, I remember every spring, us kids had to take the ones <laughs> that That wagon's ready to tip over. <laughs> Yeah, to sprout all them damn potatoes that yeah. were growing out through that burlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's down by the highway, the high bridge in the background there. Oh, yeah. You ran the field yep. east to west. They split it in half. We had to road down the middle from across from uh, Splett's driveway there. <clears throat> the east side we ran east. East and west, and the west side was north and south. Well, you got lots of crap. Looks like you got a lot of roots in there, but don't look there's enough. Or, or that thing sorted them yeah, in the this, back. Yeah, this is the new harvester. The chain on top would take the vines over, and the potatoes would fall through. Didn't need the pickers. Just had one guy on <laughs> what, in there. What's the door doing in the back, keeping that guy from falling into the back? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, what's her name's wind protection. That was Donna Berkey. That was the guy driving the tractor was Fred Berkey. That's his wife Donna up there. She wanted that. That's a wind, woman. Wind, wind protection. Yep, yep. She ran the harvester. So what's she doing there? Well, she's running the conveyor and then the, oh, the motor, the conveyor, the side up and down. Oh. And then she had a clutch in there to run the back of the harvester. Hmm. And any other person there just kicking yep. out rocks? Yep, weeds and rocks and dirt or whatever. Anything gets through. That's living see, right there. See, isn't it? see, they got the ear lappers down, don't you? It's cold. Yeah, what? what's it like October, early November? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many years have it been since you? 88 was the last year we had potatoes. Okay. We're taking a shortcut through Rice Woods here. Rather than go on the road, the cops stopped us on the road. Didn't have no license or anything on the trucks. Well, the cops stopped us. me one time. I was driving a truck. I don't know how many ton I was overloaded. You know, it was only ton and a half trucks, you know, I think I had eight ton of potatoes <laughs> on and no license, no brakes, no <laughs> turn signal, no nothing. <laughs> Your the, farmer. the legend lives on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how open the woods was then. That's Wright's Woods? Yep. Mm -hmm. Then we went through Osterman's yard, went straight across where Bob Hansen's got his house now. Yep. The cop told you to keep that thing off the road. Yep. <laughs> Imagine that. Why did you have the thing so far away from the cab of the truck? Well, that was a that was a old school bus truck. It had a longer wheelbase, so he had to put it there for the tires, you know, oh. to fit. She was a little heavy in back. You gotta drove too close to the conveyor. He's kind of loaded on one side. Yep. Oh, we had broke a few axles sometimes. Fur farm action or? I don't know, Grandpa's digging a hole. Yeah. Grandpa loved that crap, didn't he? Just yep. getting the most bang for the buck. He liked his dual hitches. He was a innovator. Yep. He was all about efficiency. I suppose he was all about getting her done so he could go trapping. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're making the road up to Carl's house, or where are they now? I think that's it. Was um, there a road there where the power line is now? Was that like well, an actual that, that road? was the only trail to get back to Carl's cabin to start with. You think that's where it's at? Or? Yeah, I think they're putting the road in down by the lake there now. So is it, this is your equipment, or you hired this? No, this is, I think, Talbots at that time. Oh, okay. I don't know, he 
somebody's ditch in here. I don't know what this is. What the heck? Is that like a digger? Yeah, digging a trench. I don't know what. This has got to be oh. some other place. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. Huh. I'll be damned. Look like an old gold dredge. So you got an irrigation canal there or what? Know, I don't know what this is. First time I've seen it. So you don't think that's the canal from... No, no, he had that dug before I was born. Oh. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Oh, he had projects going. DNR knew him well. <laughs> they stopped him from working there on, oh, uh, by uh, Smith's there when Bob owned that land. He was trying to level it. Dean, that might be where it is there. I think that's Bob. Oh, there is Bob. a straight ditch through there, isn't there? Yeah, Bob Kunkel's. That's facing north from the, from the highway field there. He was leveling off that field, gonna just make a ditch in and fill in the swamp. Then the DNR got a hold of him, he had to stop. Yeah, that's old Midway School up there. Oh. That's Very. where Dale Stober lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, he, a mass that, scraper. Yeah, is that what he used in the fur farm? Yeah, that's yeah. what's sitting in the shed there by Paul's. Huh? Yeah, that's the old that, Midway. The square? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Midway yeah. school, and that's Smith, yeah. Smith's up there now. That's the, about the best field in the county right there by the high bridge, isn't it? Yeah. So there's a lot of work went into that. Oh, yeah. That old car is sitting in the slough hole, isn't it? Still sitting there? <laughs> I got one sitting down there. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, we don't like throwing stuff away. <laughs> well, the rats and the snakes got to have a pace, place to sit and live, you know. Who's that old girl? That's Bronco. Bronco, boy. Dad's dog. That was Bronco. I got him as a pup just before I went in the Army. Then Roundy and I went on Dee Dee Bess hunting and then Bronco was gun shy. Took off after we shot. Dad picked him up about two months later. Finally, finally saw him eating on a dead deer carcass. So Dad laid his glove down there and left his sandwich there. And then the next day he come back. And the dog took off but stayed around a little bit. So he laid another sandwich there and then laid his coat down. And Went back later, well, then the dog was happy to see him, he said, so home with him. Yeah. That's funny, Grandpa's kind of this big, like you always said, he was barrel chested, and you can kind of see in every video, he's like the big dude, everybody else is rail thin, and Grandpa's pretty big and burly. Assuming that was him. Yeah. Well, well so I mean, you got it, that's, so this is by the high bridge, you got it, holy crap, they're moving a lot of dirt. Oh, yeah, he had a lot of dirt going on. Jeez. It must not be rocky. No, there's no rock. No rock. It's like the only chunk of ground we had where there wasn't any rocks. Cause that's a deep trench. So that's uh, Jessica Place there oh, in the background yeah. now. <clears throat> but now that field's totally smooth. I mean, it's great yeah, well, perfectly. There's, there's still a little water hole there. Kind of close to the road there. Yeah. Dang. But I mean, holy smokes, where? I mean, that is pretty impressive, like, to wreck. I mean, what is that? 
46, 60 acres? It was 80. Okay. But I mean, holy crap. How, how would you go about conserving the topsoil and moving that? Because now that's all flat. We moved the topsoil. Part of that, uh, Leonard Splett staked out, had it in strips, and he stripped the topsoil out. But there's a lot of it, the clay is mixed in, you know. There goes the cars on the high ridge. Yeah, you can see so, cars going by. So basically what he's doing now is digging a canal to get rid of the low, or the, the low land to drain it, and then, then you're filling on it all yeah, the low. Well, okay. He was leveling it more, not so much draining. He wanted to shave the hill off and... Get them, kind of make it gradual, like the road, the like the field down there. There was some knobs in that field uh, by the highway, but I mean, he got it all sloped off. Jeez, that's a lot of work. Yeah, that little cat did a lot of work. Oh, tell you. crap! Huh. Well, there we go. So where is this now? Well, that's I think is on. Uh, I think that's the fry place, yeah, the dam Lightning he made. Creek. Yep, the dam he made on the fry place, place by Lightning Creek, washed out. Right underneath there by where the cat, yeah. Yep. Right by where we, we chased old cowbell. Yep. So which way we facing north there, kind of northwestish. Yep. So that's a, where's all that water coming from? Well, right now we're facing east, and then the, right there's the dam. Yeah. And then it kind of makes a bend there. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Call that Mole's Pond. <laughs> He'd go swimming in there, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so was that from that spring coming from the draw? Well, coming like from... I suppose there must, was probably a reservoir there at yeah. one time and then he busted it open? or well, that was all runoff. You know, that's the woods up by my place. Mike Stobrel's off to the right. Left. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the dam now. The dam, okay. Um... It's along the line fence there by... Oh, yep, yep, yep. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. That's looking west there. There was, wasn't too many trees there then. Ooh, what Dad, Dad, six row planter. Oh, Corn? What did he do, take? Yeah, old horse. Three, two rows and put them together? Yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like. Old horse, horse, horse planters. You had to be careful with them. They were really moving there when you're turning. So this is corn. Yeah. Had them gobbed on the old two-point hitch on the International. So pretty much everything was Jimmy rigged, huh? Oh yeah. So old man. So <laughs> old ways die hard. What's the what's the saying? Old habits die hard. Yeah. Drinking a brewski? Is that Paul? Yeah. That looks like Paul. Yeah, that's Paul. I see you got your old fatigues on. Not really. Huh? Yeah, it could be. Oh, G.I. Yeah. Joe, huh? Oh, Paul was getting into the donuts by the looks of things. Oh, he was, was kind of chubby. Mm -hmm. What's he sitting by? Oh, just check to make sure there's seed going down or what? Yeah, I don't know. We probably had to have fill at the other end with, for fertilizer. I don't know. Check to see if they were working. I've been looking for a two-roll corn planter. You know what they want for the things? Well, I should have bought for you when I was up at uh, well, Rock Creek. They had, uh, I don't know, three or four, four row. You know, old internationals, they were in good shape. I should have, they went cheap up there too. I don't know, 100 or 200. Well, bucks. you can buy, a, buy an old four row cheaper than you can buy a two yeah, roll. Yeah, yeah. And all you got to do is cut one off if you got narrow place to get in, you know, for for deer plots or whatever. Yeah. Hell, four row is, sh should be narrow enough. Was that Eddie and Grandpa? Yep, Eddie and Grandpa. Yeah, you could see he was smiling, waving to the camera. Eddie had the big combine, Dad had the little eight row, or eight foot. Was that the one in our shed? Nope, the one in our shed is the same size as what Eddie had. Dad bought it from Ollie Stobro. 
staple, snow bro. Is this oats or wheat? Oats. Huh. And you'd sell that to market, probably? Yeah, we sold really... most of it to co op, fed it, you know, cattle. It's actually kind of funny because you're bouncing back in time. You're never sure where you're at. Yeah, what, was, are you, what are you doing? Oh, I was oh wow, young. you had hydraulic. So you were modern. We yeah. had to shovel our truck off. Oh, yeah. I, I think I had, Kurt and I had to shovel our trucks off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which woman is this, Gus? <laughs> yeah, yesterday's. <laughs> I don't believe a damn thing these guys are saying. Tammy Sue. <laughs> where where are you unloading here? That's our yard. There was a granary there, and the shed wrapped around the granary. Right as you come in the yard, between the well, the circle in the yard. Yeah, where it's lawn now. That was. Grain we was in there and then the shed kind of a lean to and then we had a potato house there too. Oh, yeah. How old do you reckon you are there? A teenager? I guess. Oh, oh, we're well, we're snowmobiling. Harvest is done, those cows in the background? Snowmobiling. Yep. yep, cattle in the background. So it looks like we're feeding Just them. Feeding the cows. Uh, young stock or those uh, milk cows you reckon well, they look pretty big? Young those stock. Are... We always raise Dang! Bread. Well you have a pretty good fleet. We always raise bread heifers while well, we bought calves and raised them up. Sold spring You must heifers. have been coming with the feed wagon or they were going to beat hell. Spring and heifers. Oh yeah, they're lined out, ain't they? What in the world? Spread lime now. By hand? Well, I what? suppose it's packed in. Oh, probably to get it started. Yeah. Flowing. Probably frozen, you reckon? This is down by the creek, those oh. little fields by the creek. Oh, well. We, yeah. Dad even lined them. Dang. I suppose those are probably good for potatoes because you could get irrigation out of the creek, huh? Did you raise potatoes there a lot, or? That was last year I had them was on uh, where Sheps's are renting there now. I forgot Dad lined those little patches. It was a county. The, the Is that the county out. outfit? Yep. Yeah. Big of orange trucks. So what, like when they weren't doing road stuff or something, they just hauled for hire or what? Well, the county had a pit. Yeah. Oh. Yep. So what, they just find a vein of lime around here and then they... Oh, it was down by... South of your place down there. Turtle one, Creek. One of, one of them, yep. Turtle Creek. Yeah. That's your barn now? Yep. Just had the old wood silo there. <clears throat> well, I think that pit down there, I thought Osterman's got in on that. Yep. Ronnie hauled out of there. Yeah. Can't remember where the county pit was anymore. That was farther south. I think they got it down by now, <coughs> someplace. That's you standing there? Yeah. Oh, ho! Holy smokes. Dang! I suppose you're standing there with your shovel because he gets himself in so far and he can't back back out, right? Yeah, yeah. And you gotta shovel him out. Holy crap. That's a long day. <laughs> well, here we go.
we are spring. <laughs> Short winter. Dad's two plow hitch. I'm running it with a bulldozer. Yeah. Dog following behind. Rip would have loved those days. He'd have got plenty of exercise. See how we're plowing under a uh, cover crop? They talk about cro cover crops nowadays. Look how much we used to plow under. That's rye. That was just to conserve topsoil? Yep. Green manure. Nitrogen. Yep. Mm. Humus and nitrogen. I love this. I love seeing, like, I still remember Grandpa's, like, it's just a silhouette. You know, like, when you see him, you know him, yeah. you know? Boy, that looks pretty, pretty black. You get three rings like that going in and cover some ground. Yeah. Plowed 80 acres in a day. Grandpa wanted to do that, so we started early in the morning, and I don't know, I think we finished 9 10 that night. Ooh, we got some dynamite going. Yeah, blasting stumps. Then they came out with the chisel plow. Yeah. I don't think nobody mold board plows anymore, do they? Hardly any, no. Go pheasant hunting, we see them once in a while, they're still plowing. We had a barn collapse or what? That's the fry place. I forgot about that. Dad's combine was in that barn when it went down. So, fry place, fry. So, this is the creek bottom. Yeah. So, was it right by the corner of the road or or was it back in there? Yeah, back about halfway down the driveway there, off to the left. Hmm. Well, so, what? It just... Dad moved the house from that place. That's what we lived in, was the house that was originally on that place. So, this isn't Henry Hines's. No, no. Or back by Carlson's? No. Well, this is straight east of our place, the fried yeah. place going back there. Okay. First 40. Dad's combine was in there. Mm -hmm. Looks like a little few dents in there. Yeah. Not that he couldn't fix though, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't remember what the hell we did with it. So did Grandpa owned the barn at that time? Yeah. yeah. We had put cob corn in there one time in that barn. Henry Hines moved the milk house there. That's what he used, Henry. We filled that barn up with cob corn one time, the hay mow and the bottom of the really? corn, yep. Then we shoveled it out by hand. A few rats in there, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> rats in there. So what was it, a storm that knocked this down? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, we're irrigating. Yep. Where are you out there? <clears throat> oh, I must have been down by the lake right by the No, that's ramps. by that's by Paul's. And the ditch there, the last lot where we yeah. drive up by Paul's and the road ends. <clears throat> Made a ditch in there. Is that gas leaking out of that barrel? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. That's why there's no fish in that lake. What do we That was for spraying. We filled the tanks up, you know. Then we pumped all our gravity flow, filled the barrels up. We used to go swimming in that wood barrel like Petticoat Junction. Oh boy, well, how many grills do you have in there? <laughs> you won't be lying to me either. <laughs> Probably only one, not all I can fit. <laughs> oh no. no. I don't know. It's a pretty good sized barrel. Well, it was a 300 pounder, you'd only get one in there. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. But the thin ones probably weren't any any good at picking potatoes though. And there was probably barrels of DDT in the back of the pickup. <laughs> I think we're kind of regressing on our machinery there. I think that that's old Uncle Art there. Oh, you got a disc. Yeah, 14 foot disc, boy, that was something. Planting yeah. potatoes? Yep, planting potatoes. Dang, yeah, that looks... I'm not so sure that you're not using that same disc today. That's the disc that's on the fur farm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sitting in the weeds. Butch, Bye. Bye. Getting her done? Yeah. There's that chisel plow or? No, that's the old five bottom plow. Okay. Dad bought that cat new and the plow new. Whoa, that's rough ground. Yeah. Spreading fertilizer there. Yeah. Oh. Bagged the fertilizer. Sunday. Had the new fancy car out or what? How can you tell? Well, everybody's in the yard. Snowing. Holy balls, this is long, Gustus. Don't stop for nothing. Don't stop for nothing. What is the temp out there now? It ain't oh, too bad. It ain't it's bad. bad. It's just no. humid. We milk cows through hotter <laughs> than this, didn't we? Oh, <laughs> let's not go back to that. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta get at least another six pack in us before we yeah, well, start. Nightmare. <laughs> Ugh. Sweaty son of a.